knows if you live or die. The newly released movie Deadpool and Wolverine has featured one of the most vicious villains in the Marvel Universe, Cassandra Nova. However, this evil twin of Professor Xavier has been portrayed as a rather timid version of a comic book counterpart. Her incredible powers in the movie are only the tip of the iceberg if you consider her supremacy in the comics, and even her polished and pretty face appearance is a far cry from the hideous reality behind the character. Thus, in this video, We'll make sure that you get to know the real Cassandra Nova as we dive deep into her anatomical details and abilities. There might be a few minor spoilers from the movie, so you've been warned in advance. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Cassandra Nova? Exploring her twisted existence as a mumadrai. It's a well-known piece of trivia that Cassandra Nova is the twin sister of Professor Xavier, but her existence has a very twisted story right from her origins. When Charles Xavier's mother, Sharon Xavier, was pregnant, Charles's incredible genetic traits and psychic abilities created a mumadrai, which is basically a spirit that's equal and opposite of an individual. This manifested as his older twin, Cassandra Nova, but there was no scope to coexist from the very beginning. Cassandra Nova is known as a mumadrai by the Shia, which is basically used to denote an entity that an individual has to fight before being born. It roughly translates to anti-self, which explains her relationship with her twin brother perfectly. According to Shi'a mythology, the Mumadrai reside in the astral plane and they're born alongside every sentient creature. It's some kind of an alien parasite that's drawn to vast psychic abilities like Charles Xavier's. So, Cassandra Nova is actually the Mumadrai of Professor Xavier, and the moment she gained consciousness, she tried to strangle and choke her twin brother to death. In retaliation, and after realizing that his twin is essentially evil, he was forced to fight back, which led to her apparent destruction. But it was soon revealed that she managed to survive despite the near-death experience. Initially, the shock of the battle with Charles had an impact on their mother Sharon, and she suffered a miscarriage. Cassandra was stillborn, but even though she was pronounced dead by the doctors, she survived and continued to grow as a mass of cells in a sewer wall. She was preparing for revenge all this while, and waiting to build a new body for herself. And when the opportunity came up, she got a rather impactful revenge when she orchestrated the Genosha mutant massacre that killed over 16 million mutants. Can she be classified as a mutant? There are many who regard the existence of Cassandra Nova as a sentient energy, and this group of people shouldn't really consider her as a mutant. That being said, the popular opinion is that she is a mutant, and recently her appearance in the MCU has led many to call her MCU's first Omega-level mutant. This is the strongest class of mutants, and there's no upper limit as such to the extent of their powers. Just to give you some context, there are only a handful of Omega-level mutants like Jean Grey, Storm, Magneto, and Legion, and you can consider Cassandra Nova to be at par with these powerful mutants, if not above them, on the list. How does Cassandra Nova switch bodies and merge with people? This is the reason behind the difficulty in keeping track of her. Cassandra Nova can instantly switch bodies, and she's done this on multiple occasions in the comic books. First, she killed Trust by merging into his body, and later she switched her mind into Charles Xavier's body without anyone getting a hint of what happened. To make things more dramatic, this happened right before she was about to be shot by Xavier, and it turned out that Charles was stuck outside his physical body, and she went about her mission of destroying humanity while working alongside the X-Men. Later, he did manage to force her out of his body, and when she was trapped inside her own body that had been dead, it was a great opportunity to keep her locked away in a metal box. How does Cassandra Nova read someone's mind, exploring her phasing abilities? One of the memorable moments in the Deadpool and Wolverine movie featuring Cassandra Nova is when she melts her fingers into the flesh of the victims, which effectively recreates her methods from the comics. However, there's also a noticeable change that actually highlights a major aspect of her anatomy. Originally, she doesn't need to put her fingers into someone's face to get into their minds, and even in the comics she only does it for fun and to kill the particular individual. The movie suggests that she needs to phase her fingers through the likes of Deadpool and Wolverine to gain access to their deepest insecurities and fears. It's almost creepy as she slides her hands through the heads of multiple characters, gripping and scratching around, seemingly causing them a lot of pain. It surely adds a fun twist to the character, but the gimmick isn't a necessity for her in the comic books. As for her phasing abilities, it's almost magical when an individual can pass through solid matter without disturbing the structure. Cassandra Nova accomplishes this impossible feat because she's able to pass her atoms through the spaces between the atoms of the object through which she's moving. This allows her to temporarily merge with the object through which she's passing, and it remains exactly as it was before. Before. This phasing ability enables her to escape from impossible situations. She can also spring a surprise attack out of nowhere. Cassandra Nova's DNA expertise makes her a dangerous enemy. She's not just someone with raw powers or some mind-blowing abilities, but Cassandra Nova has also mastered the art of genetic duplication. 
She can easily copy the DNA of an individual and make use of it while constructing a physical body. There have been instances where she's used her powers to access the full spectrum of any latent mutant functions in one's DNA. Aside from this, she's also capable of manipulating someone's DNA and she can break it down to a molecular level. Cassandra can also evolve the existing DNA of a superhuman mutant, and this results in unleashing their untapped genetic potential. This particular superpower makes her a dangerous enemy, because she can gain access to any mutant or superpowered individual among her opponents, and deduce the details of all the others who are linked to his or her DNA. How do her telekinesis powers make her a mighty opponent? We're often so focused on the other aspects of her superpowers that we choose to undermine one of her strongest assets, her remarkable telekinesis abilities. This allows her to manipulate living and non-living things, and even energy. She can levitate herself or anyone else, and she can exert a great force on them. These force blasts can hurl the heaviest of objects towards her intended direction, and Cassandra can also create a telekinetic shield strong enough to protect her from an incoming missile. Since she can manipulate matter on a sub-molecular level, Cassandra can use this to her advantage, and even the movie offers a glimpse into her powers. She hardly has to move a muscle to incapacitate the likes of Wolverine and Deadpool, and the way she commands fear and respect among the mutants in her realm proves how she's a class above the rest. What's the extent of Cassandra's telepathic powers? For someone who mirrors almost every feature of Charles Xavier, you'd expect Cassandra Nova to possess some exceptional telepathic abilities, and she does. She's among the most powerful telepaths in the world. She can effortlessly read minds and enforce her thoughts on other minds. Her telepathic cloak is a very interesting feature, and this allows her to go undetected by others. If she wants, she can even take those near her within the shield to avoid detection. Cassandra is an expert when it comes to controlling the minds of others. She can even possess their minds for a significant time period to use them as her tool. Her psychic abilities are so strong that she can also create telepathic illusions that turn her invisible. Only Professor Xavier can match her in terms of the telepathic abilities. Even he's fallen short a few occasions. Does Cassandra have regenerative abilities? She wouldn't have been as powerful and invincible had it not been for her supreme regenerative powers. She can heal from the worst of injuries in very quick time, and her regenerative abilities are probably at par with the likes of Wolverine and Deadpool. In various comic book story arcs, she's proven her powers by recovering from injuries that would have killed the toughest of superheroes. Cassandra can even grow her organs back if they're damaged, and we've seen her regenerating her limbs and arms when required. You know a villain ought to be taken seriously when severing her body parts does her no real damage, and she can grow it back in no time. Is Cassandra Nova more powerful than Charles Xavier? Professor Xavier may have gotten the better of her on most occasions, but that doesn't make him much stronger than his evil twin. In fact, it's clearly stated that Cassandra Nova has all the telepathic and telekinetic powers of Charles Xavier, and she's also one of the most powerful psychics in the world, just like him. She's shown her ability to overpower the minds of some other powerful telepaths like Emma Frost and Rachel Summers, and she's done so effortlessly. One time, she even overpowered the mind of Charles Xavier, which makes us wonder if she is actually more powerful than her twin brother. This is further reinstated during a sequence in the comic books when she withstands a combined attack from Charles Xavier and Jean Grey psychically. What's her personality like? You can't have a perfect supervillain without a badass and unpredictable personality. Sandra Nova fits the bill perfectly. In simple terms, she's everything that Charles Xavier stands against, since she's his anti-self. This makes her extremely sadistic and cruel without a care for the world. She doesn't hesitate to commit genocide, and she thrives in the chaos that she creates. This brutal side of her character and personality undergoes a significant change only after Jean Grey injects her with a modified sentinite, which effectively rewrites her brain. She starts to feel empathy and guilt, and she regrets her role in the Genosha Mutant Massacre. Her sadistic side, however, continues to be consistent, and she still enjoys torturing her enemies, as we've seen on numerous instances. We love her personality in the movie, which seems to be a mix of both sides. She's arrogant and aware of her incredible powers, but she also shows signs of emotions very briefly when she allows Wolverine and Deadpool to get away. Again, it all changes after she learns about the whole deal and sets out to destroy every alternate universe out there. Can Cassandra Nova reproduce? If you consider Cassandra Nova to have a physical form, well, she's quite capable of procreating for all practical purposes. However, there's no record of any evident physical relationship with her, and neither does she have any kids in the comic book storylines. When you take into account her existence on an astral level, and if she keeps shifting her consciousness into various bodies, reproducing becomes tricky, and this is probably the reason why we don't see her as a mother. It'll be very interesting if she has a baby in the future, and we'd love to know if the baby is born with her crazy superpowers. Is there a chink in her armor? How can she be defeated? Although Cassandra Nova might seem invincible when you go by her powers, she does have a weakness that can be exploited by her opponents. This is simply a device like Magneto's helmet, which can block her psychic powers. 
In the comics, Jean Grey once made Tony Stark create several replicas of this helmet in order to deal with Cassandra. Even in the movie, we see her in a vulnerable state after Deadpool manages to use Juggernaut's helmet to block out her powers. She's no longer able to exploit Wolverine's mental weakness, and even a simple bullet fired at her causes serious injuries. This helmet seems to be the only way to fight her, because in any other scenario, it's almost a lost cause. Is Cassandra Nova immortal? Let's just say she's nearly immortal, but theoretically there are ways to finish her off permanently. In Deadpool and Wolverine, she almost died from the bullet injuries after the helmet was forcibly put on her and she lost her powers. She was at the mercy of Wolverine and Deadpool, and if they went ahead with the plan, it would have been over for her. Even in the world of comic books, Cassandra Nova's been killed off a few times. They all seem to be a decisive death, until another story arc brought her back. Of course, she's far too important a character to kill off in the context of the Marvel Universe, but it's certainly not something impossible. Marvelous verdict, Cassandra Nova in the movie could have been more intimidating. Deadpool and Wolverine is such an action-packed laugh right that it almost seems unfair to point to any flaw whatsoever. However, if we had to pick out one thing that could have been better, it'd have to be the depiction of Cassandra Nova. Make no mistake, Emma Corrin is brilliant in the role, but the comic book counterpart is so intimidating that we'd have loved to see more of that dominance. In the movie, she doesn't really strike fear as such, and her true vicious nature is only seen briefly toward the end. She's seemingly dead, which is again something that the comic book fans wouldn't buy so easily, and overall, MCU may have lost the chance to put out something truly scarring and terrifying for the fans. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below what you think about this unique personality, and also tell us if you're happy with how this powerful villain has been portrayed in the movie. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if uh, you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.